you can publish code and anybody can show up and contribute to it, right? And the, the code is public, you can vet it, you can verify it. Um, if you think there's something suspicious about it, you can read it and, and assure yourself that there's not, or there is. Um, if you want to contribute to it, if it's broken, you can fix it, you can submit changes, people will take it and, and you know, everybody can share. So open source has been around forever and, and open source led to, to many things that we know and love, right? The Linux uh, operating system, which is used in, in half the phones that are out there, as well as like 80% of all the servers and stuff out there. And all over the internet, right, the, the decoders that show you JPEGs and GIFs and the original web browsers and, and actually all current web browsers are all open source. And the idea to me that you could just download like the things that academics were doing and you could see what was happening in this intellectual development uh, of the system of the whole field of cryptography was very exciting and eye-opening, right? Like you don't need academic access to get access to the ePrint archive. You don't need to be a cryptographer to read these papers. There is some, some sort of basic math literacy you need, but you can get that from the internet as well. You don't need to go through a system. There's no, no gates that uh, uh, you're being kept out of. There is if you want credentials perhaps, but that's not what you needed to do Bitcoin. You didn't need any credentials. You still don't need any credentials. It's very much an open access system where as long as you can be, you know, kind of kind of reasonably sociable and, and get along with people um, and not show up and start fights and, and fool around on Twitter all day, then you can get stuff done, right? People will recognize that, that you know what you're talking about or don't, and they're very helpful, they're very friendly, they'll, they'll help you to ramp up. In 2014, there was a company called Blockstream that started. Um, and they're, they're reasonably well known, certainly on the technical side of things. A lot of people have heard of Blockstream and outside of the, the technical sphere, or maybe not as well known. But they were at the time, in late 2014, in, in a project by a bunch of people basically on IRC who were able somehow to form a company around all this experimental kind of crypto stuff that we were doing basically in our spare time for fun. I've continued basically in, in that vein over the last... Uh, six or eight years pretty much since Blockstream's been formed. At this point, I, I'm the director of research at Blockstream. I run a, a team of researchers. For a little while, we were kind of the only team uh, in town, but now there are many, which is super cool to see. Uh, Chaincode Labs also funds a lot of Bitcoin development, and they, they partially fund the Bitcoin Optech newsletter and, and all sorts of outreach associated to that. Um, there's Brink, which is a company, Mike Schmidt, who, who lives here in Austin, although he's, he's not here. He lives outside Austin. You know? No, I shouldn't point in what direction, but you know, he's around. Um, and uh, and there's, there's Block, of course, um, which was Square Crypto until recently, right? There's, there's all these different groups who are doing Bitcoin research as well as stakeholders, you know, exchanges and stuff. Funding research like paying for core developers to work and, and contributing to this open source world. This is a fascinating thing to see, aside from just the fascination in Bitcoin itself, from the open source perspective, Open source has been around forever. It's, it's been around in some form or other, probably since uh, the 70s, I think it sort of came in as an idea. And before that, actually, everything was like, nobody even thought about trying to monetize source code. Um, and then when people did, open source was right there to say, well, you know, maybe we could do that without trapping people and trying to control access to information and like somehow forming a censorship-based monetization model. 